Hi there, how's it going? So I'm out on another adventure. I'm currently walking the track to Crosby's Hut and that's in the Coromandel. So I started at Tapu Road End. I'll go into the hut and we'll come out via the Waiotahi track. Weather's not great, I think we're gonna get wet. Although just sort of misty rain at the moment, nothing underneath the bush. But if we get out, uh, if we get out of the bush, I think we're gonna get a bit wet. Crosby's Hut, come on, let's go. Whoa, that was a bit of a slog up those hills. Uh, I think I'm uh, pretty much close to the top now, although the clouds really settled in. And the only thing you can see between the trees, well, is cloud. So I was hoping for some views back across Thames, maybe the Firth of Thames, but uh, no, she's, uh, she's pretty much clagged in. And, uh, and we're climbing again. What can I tell you, old boy like me, I don't do hills too well, but then I think you probably know that. Uh, and yeah, rain's, rain's still kind of holding off, but I suspect the heavens are going to open shortly. Anyway, let's carry on, shall we? So I'm walking along the ridge line and uh, I'm right at the very top so it's just kind of undulating it's a really nice walk actually but uh, the clag is right down on the ridge line so you look between the trees and all you can see is white so we're right in the clouds the rain's still holding off which is great but uh, yeah I was hoping for some views but uh, yeah all I'm seeing is cloud at the moment So I've resorted to putting my coat on and stopping, stopping for a quick bite to eat. I think I'm, oh, I'm a couple of hours in, so can't be far away. Doc sign said three and a half hours, making good time. So let's hope we're not too far away. But yeah, weather's packing in. Um, it's all right under these trees and until a gust of wind comes and then all the water that's collected on the trees just falls on you. But that's okay. It's a nice pleasant walk. It's certainly not cold, that's for sure. No. Have a quick bite to eat. Carry on. Well, that's pretty good. I've just come across the sign. Uh, basically, it says um, I can get to Thames in five and a half hours from here. Which is marvellous, not that I want to go to Thames, I've just come from there. But my hut is only an hour and a half away, which is really good. Uh, I've come from down there, and you can see that sign there, uh, Tapu Road Summit, that's where I came from, and that's three hours away. And um, actually, that's right, it took me bang on three hours to get here. So, um, pretty good. I'm quite happy with the timing, I'm quite happy with the, uh, with the route. If you go the other way on that sign, uh, you'll see that you'll get to uh, 
Wyamu Creek Road. It's about three hours down there. That'll be pretty much straight up though, I would have thought, um, because you're starting pretty much at sea level. So we're gonna carry on now. Um, only an hour and a half from the hut and a nice hot drink and, uh, well, out of the rain. Not that the rain's too bad, to be fair, but it'll be nice to get into the hut and have a hot drink. Well, here we are, as you can see, outside a wet and windy Crosby's hut. So we're sitting right up high, we're looking out over the valley. I'm hoping that this cloud clears at some point and we get a look at the valley, but let's have a look inside the hut. So before we go inside, there's a porch area, a couple of sinks to wash and bits and pieces. Um, there's only tank water, there's not a stream close by, so you've got to be a little bit careful. But let's go inside and have a look. So this is Crosby's hut proper. It's a pretty simple hut, simple design. Uh, it's a 10 bunk, two platforms of five each, obviously. Um, I'll set myself up over there. I should be all right. It's got a drying rack for your clothes, a uh, nice table, beautiful view out the windows. Well, would be a beautiful view if there wasn't any fog, obviously. Uh, and over here, obviously a cooking bench and um, the, uh, the wood burning stove. And there's a big bag of coal there uh, and a little bit of uh, wood. I went, uh, took me five minutes and I went out and I found uh, enough wood to get it going and get it started. I'll use a bit of that coal and uh, we should be very, very warm tonight. It's not that cold anyway, but uh, yeah, nice, nice to have the fire going, I think. So there's two entrances, the one that we came in, and then one on this side goes out to just uh, another porch area. Um, I guess you could get changed in here or whatever. <laughs> the old backcountry dunny. You know I love a good dunny. And here it is. This is the Crosby's dunny. And so if we have a look inside, there you go. Simple composting toilet. Uh, no issues with it. Um, nice, clean tidy and uh, pretty good really so there we go Crosby's hut toilet so one of the reasons that you pay your hut fees is because Doc stocks the uh, hut uh, with some uh, coal and as you can see if you have a look in the coal bin there's a heap of coal in there now they have to fly that in by helicopter and it's not cheap so by paying your hut fees and by doing the right thing, um, you, can, you can help the enjoyment of everybody. When you come here and you've walked up and it's cold and it's wet and it's raining, you'll be very grateful that Doc has filled up the coal box. 20 meters away, I guess. You come to a very, very sheltered area, as you can see. So this is the camping area. Now you have to book these, they get pretty busy as well. But you've got camping pads, one, two, three, four, five camping pads. I guess at a pinch you could put another uh, tent in the middle here, but they're nicely set out. Um, they're barked, they're smooth. Uh, you can see someone's been there not so long ago. 
And these are a great spot to camp. It's very, very sheltered. We're at the top of a hill, but just the way this sits in the dip and the trees around it, it would be very, very sheltered. So a very nice place to camp. You can obviously use the hut's facilities and away you go. So here it is, the uh, campsite at Crosby's Hut. Well, it's getting a bit late. Got the fire going over there nicely, so probably time to make something for dinner tonight. Um, I've got something pretty simple tonight. I get to try out my uh, my new Trangia Mini, so looking forward to that. So we'll start by just um, filling this up. That's fine. So what we're going to do is um, just got some sausages here. We we'll make a sausage casserole. No, oh, you've got to have olive oil. Doesn't no matter what you're cooking, as long as you're putting olive oil in it, it's going to taste all right. However, I have made a, a tactical error. I'm supposed to have an onion. I certainly haven't got it with me. So it's a good thing I only had three sausages. Seems like that's all that'll fit in the pan. <laughs> The plan is just to um, partially cook these, really, and um, then we can chop them up. The idea is to put them in the casserole, so I think that's what, they, what we're going to do. So I think they're looking pretty good. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we'll chop up our potatoes. Uh, pretty agricultural, really. Nothing fancy here. I think I might have overestimated the size of that pot actually, but uh, well, we'll see what happens. And what we'll do is we'll get our sausages and um, we'll just chop them as well. Looking all right, we just need to cover these now and let them do their thing. So what we'll do is we'll uh, put a bit of garlic pa um, tomato paste in there like so. What we want to do is we want to get as much of this as we can in here. So I'm thinking about half a can. Oh yeah, it's more than half a can actually. So that's looking good. Put it on the heat. And we should probably put some herbs in there as well. So oregano, thyme, um, oh, garlic, and uh, what else is in there? Basil, probably. So there we go. We'll put that in as well. Get that going. And just see if we can get any, any of that tomato juice. There we go. It's looking good, isn't it? Where's this? So what's happening is uh, it's, it's boiling away. So hopefully it's cooking the potatoes. It'll reduce down as well. Um, all those lovely spices will uh, we'll go through it. We've got that beautiful tomato sauce. And, um, and obviously it's got those sausages. So um, I think I got a bit carried away and put too much in the pot. So I've, uh, I've made a mess to clean up, but oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'm still looking forward to this. So, so I think we'll give that another, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Well, we'll see how this is going. It's certainly making a mess, that's for sure. But um, but it's starting to look pretty good. I think uh, I think it's probably ready. It's reduced. I think that's us. So we'll uh, take that off like so. And um, might just clean up the mess that we've made. Just let that cool for a couple of minutes. I think that's way way too hot to try and eat. Whoa, this does look good, doesn't it? See how she tastes. Other than hot, very nice. My spices, I could put a bit, probably could have put a bit more garlic. Hmm. But um, the basil, the oregano, etc. Oh, perfect. Boy, it's a busy hut. 
somebody here virtually every single day. If I go back the last two or three months, I can't actually see a day where there was nobody. So there you go. Oh, there we go. 25th of October, there was nobody here that day. Don't know what happened that day, but 25th, there was no one. So with Crosby's Hut, if you want to come here, it's a great place. Why wouldn't you? You should book online. You can reserve your bunk. So it's a busy hut. So if there are a lot of people here, you can reserve a bed. You can't reserve which one, but obviously you can you can reserve a bunk by prepaying for it online. So go to the doc website, uh, check out Crosby's Hut and uh, and book your stay here. Come on down. She's a great hut. Let's see you here. Well, good morning. I'm having a cup of coffee this morning instead of my normal tea. Uh, just sitting out, we've got two panoramic windows behind me and I can see right the way up the Coromandel Peninsula. I can see out to Table Mountain. I can see the pinnacles. It's very, very spectacular views. This is lovely viewpoint. Uh, the only issue is, of course, the clouds are rolling in and looks like the weather's packing in. It's probably going to end up to be similar than and it was yesterday, but at least it's not cold. So I am going to go back via a different track. I came in over the Tapu Summit from the Tapu Corrigan Road, and I'm going to head off uh, the other way down one of the tracks. There's a number of tracks going down to Thames. Uh, I'm taking one down to, I think, the Waiotahi track, uh, which they tell me uh, doesn't have a lot of stream crossings, which is great because with all the rain we've had, no doubt those stream crossings would be uh, would be fairly full at the moment. So we'll head back down there. I think it's about a full four hours, something like that. And, uh, and we'll be back in Thames. So I had a great night. Thanks for coming along. Cheers. Here we go. Time for a breakfast this morning. A couple of eggs, I think. So uh, we'll get the, get the little trangia going again. Nothing fancy, just some eggs. We've got here. Been uh, overcast all morning. We're just getting a bit of sunshine. Isn't that great? I wonder how long that'll last. Probably about two minutes into my walk, I would think. There we go. Let's tip that in there. Very nice. Well, this will be a test for the non-stick, won't it? I've never used this pan before, so uh, we'll soon find out how non-stick non-stick is, won't we? Should be interesting, shouldn't it? Oh, yeah. That worked all right. So, a bit of cheese. Mm, 
close that up like so. So we just really want uh, the cheese to melt in there, nothing more than that. And, um, and then it'll be ready. So just browning the other side a bit, toasting the other side, just uh, another minute or so and I think we're done basically. I think that looks like us. There we go. So there we go. Nice little, uh, nice little egg and cheese sandwich. Mm. Cheese is running out. It's beautiful. It's because you can't fly on one wing, I think we probably should just do another one here. Well, there we go. Breakfast. A couple of uh, lovely eggy bread sandwiches with a bit of cheese in there. Looking good. Let's see how we go, shall we? Oh yeah, that's a winner. Mm. Perfect. Nothing like starting the day in a nice egg breakfast. I suppose you could have fried off some bacon and put them in there as well, but... So here I am. I'm up at Crosby's Hut. I'm just getting ready to go now. And as you can see, the views are just spectacular. It's a very, very impressive place if you like looking out over the views and things like that. But you can see right up to, um, I'm presuming that's Coromandel Township way up there. Uh, and uh, if we swivel around a little bit behind me there, just in the clouds up there would be the pinnacles. And of course we've got Table Mountain as well. But if we swing around that way and look behind me, we're not looking too good. That's where I'm going. Let's have a look. Yeah, so that's where I'm going down there. Doesn't look too good, does it? Um, it looks like it's raining and whatnot, but um, but that's okay. So I'm I'm going to be confident. I've got my raincoat and my bag not on me, and I'm going to see how far we get down there. So came in as I said. Um, over the uh, Tapu Summit and we're going out the other way so that's it for uh, Crosby's Hut and let's get a move on So dogs are not allowed in dock huts and Crosby's is no different. You can bring your dog here, but uh, preferably after it's done Kiwi aversion training. If you haven't done Kiwi aversion training and you bring your dog, you do have to keep it on a lead at all times. And because they're not allowed in the hut, uh, dock give you these. They're about, uh, I don't know, two or three minutes down the trail from the hut. And these are obviously dog boxes, kennels, for you to put your dog in. So pretty comfy actually all the mod cons for a dog uh, you can lock the lock the gate so uh, so they can't get out and uh, and they'd be comfy spending the night here but just remember you can't bring your dog into dock land without having a kiwi aversion training uh, and obviously they can't stay in huts so here you go Well, it looks like I'm on the right track, isn't it? Thames, five hours that way. So uh, the track's anything to go by. Should be reasonably easy. I thought it was a bit closer than that, to be fair. I guess when you look at it on the map, it's only that far, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. All right, let's carry on, shall we? I must admit it's a pretty nice track this. I have to laugh, it's quite a popular hut as I said. So as I'm heading down, there's obviously people coming up. I think this is uh, this is the main track, I think. 
But um, I'm passing groups of people and, you know, how are you, hello, all that sort of thing. You're going to the hut for the night? Yeah, 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 we're going to the hut. So, so far I've counted 14 people going to the hut. It's a 10 bunk hut and you have to book. So I did ask the last, have you booked, have you booked? Yeah, 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 we've all booked. So um, I'm pretty sure somebody's telling porkies. I guess they'll sort it out when they get to the hut. But uh, yeah, I like that. It's a good thing I didn't go on the weekend. So the track is wide and very well maintained. It's obviously the remnants of the original road through to Crosby Settlement, I guess. And uh, very nice, easy to walk. Uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it, really. I mean, it really is an old road. So uh, lots of uh, bits of wood across it and stones filling in the boggy parts and things like that. Um, so it's slightly better than a usual tramping track and uh, pretty much suitable for just about anybody I think a bit of a boggy bit here and a uh, bit more boggy here ah. so I guess we'll keep going shall we The closer we get to Thames, the more you see remnants of the gold mining. I mean, this was a big gold mining area, and there's mine shafts buried in the walls and uh, and all over the place. So uh, you've got to be a little bit careful. Some of them are quite dangerous, but uh, what strikes me is the size of them. They're actually really small. So clearly, someone like me, who's uh, 1.9 meters tall, whatever that, 6'2", 6'3", he wouldn't have been any good. You have to be a little guy to get in there, 5'8", something like that, I would have thought. But uh, yeah, brave boys going in those mine shafts, that's for sure. Well, as you can probably see, there's the uh, beginning of the track behind me. So that's me done for another day. That's the second of the Coromandel huts that I've been to. So the Pinnacles is the other one. If you want to have a look at my trip to the Pinnacles, check that video out up there. I'll see you over there. Thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate it. Stay safe. See you later.